Okay, today, uh, the message we're going to be looking at together is entitled, Debts Forgiven, Slaves Released. And the passage we're going to look at together comes from Deuteronomy 15. Um, and we're going to cover the entire passage, but just for the reading, um, we're just going to read verses 1 and 2 together. So Deuteronomy 15, uh, verses 1 and 2. It says, at the end of every seven years, you must cancel debts. This is how it is to be done. Every creditor shall cancel all, any loan they have made to a fellow Israelite. They shall not require payment from anyone among their own people because the Lord's time for canceling debts has been proclaimed. Amen. Let's pray together. Dear Father God, we just thank you for this day and this opportunity to go through word together. Father God, I just pray that during this time, you allow us to really focus upon you and upon your word. Allow us to clear from our mind any worries that we have, um, any distracting thoughts. And really, during this time, to just focus on your word. So I pray, Father God, that you grant us the filling of the Holy Spirit. And through your spirit, Father God, we can receive grace through your word, healing through your word direction, spiritual strength. And I pray that especially during today's word, you allow us to really reflect upon ourselves and see the change that's needed. I pray, Father God, that this is a time you can really move our hearts. We pray, Father God, that you bless this time that we have together. And we pray all these things in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Uh, so today we're looking at uh, Deuteronomy 15, um, and we're continuing going through the book of Deuteronomy. And this passage uh, is titled The Year of Canceling Debts. So basically, um, every seven years, or the seventh year, it's a time to cancel debts. It's also a time to release any slaves that you have. Um, and we didn't read that entire passage, but if you have time, read through it. So it's about canceling debts, freeing slaves... Um, that you have, and basically a year of, you know, forgiveness in a way. Um, and so looking at these two things, canceling debts and releasing slaves, um, just understand this better. There is a relationship between these two. Now, for example, especially at that time, if you had a large debt, an unpayable debt, that would lead you to selling yourself into servitude or slavery to the person to pay off that debt. So there is this correlation between the debt that's owed and entering into a state of slavery. And what's important is, especially this passage that we're looking at today, God's command is to really free someone that is caught in this trap. And so the key biblical principle we're looking at is redemption. Redemption, it's about ransoming or purchasing someone out of bondage to slavery or servitude. So they can ultimately be free. And I think this is very important for us because the application part of this is tied to our relation to God, but also not only our relationship to God, our relationship to other people. And what I mean by that is, you know, of course, we have this large debt of sin against God stemming from Genesis 3. Um, but we also have these sins against others. And that leads us to a debt of sin. And there's also sins that are committed against us. And those also are debts of sin. And just like, you know, I spoke about earlier, these debts of sin, they lead to a state of spiritual slavery. And that's the thing that I want you to really think about today is, you know, how these debts of sin, they lead us to this spiritual slavery. And because of that, you know, God is giving them the way out. The seventh year, a year of canceling debts, a year of freeing servants. It's a year of redemption, a year of forgiveness. And since we're on the topic of forgiveness, um, I'm sure you guys know that it is not easy <laughs> to forgive someone, um, especially if they've hurt you um, and sinned against you in a strong way. And looking even at today's passage regarding forgiveness of debts and freeing slaves, um, you know, God even acknowledges the attitude that people will have. It says in verse 7, you know, people have a hard heart towards this. 
not wanting to release people from their debts, um, not wanting to release their servants and slaves. They might even be tight-fisted regarding it, not wanting to let go of it, really holding on to it. Um, and it also says in verse 10, um, you might have a grudging heart regarding this. And I think this is true for us. When it comes to forgiveness of others, we feel hard-hearted at times. We feel tight-fisted, not wanting to let go of what happened. Um, ultimately, we just carry that grudge with us our entire lives. It's not easy to let go of this debt. It's not easy to let go of debts of money when people owe us money. But either is it easy to let go of this debt of sin that is owed as well. But it comes down to this. When we withhold forgiveness, is basically allowing that person to remain in a state of spiritually slavery, to be spiritually enslaved. Now, this isn't good for us, and it's also not good for them as well. Because what it means is there's never any peace, never any reconciliation that takes place, which is what our God is all about and the God of love. Just a moment. So today, I think through this passage, of course, you could just read it and you see it. It's all about money and, and slaves. But I think it's really a good time for us to reflect on these things, redemption and forgiveness. And I think God is really saying, really take a moment to reflect upon yourself. And we'll see this in today's passage, but he's basically saying, remember your state. Remember your state of slavery and the redemption that you receive from God. Because if you remember that, knowing that now you too can share that same forgiveness and that same grace to others. That way, liberating them and yourself from that sin. It's the path to redemption. It's the path to healing, the path to reconciliation that God is leading us to here. So that's what we're going to be looking at together. So the first point and the first step to this is to really remember our state. And so the first point is spiritual debtors and slaves, spiritual debtors and slaves. Now, of course, there is this physical state and spiritual state that are related to one another, right? Our spiritual state impacts our physical state and vice versa. And so it's important that we don't just look at the physical state of things, but we look beyond that to the spiritual state of things. And so the first thing, debt, what is our debt? It's a debt of sin. It is owed a penalty, a punishment. Basically, this debt of sin that we have, we are always paying for it our entire lives. From Genesis 3, from the moment Adam and Eve entered into it, generations after, we are continuously paying this debt of sin. We're born into it. It's original sin. And that's why we're born into a state of suffering. We end up falling into curses, end up in a state of death. Because as scripture declares, Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. That is the state we're all in. Why? Because of this debt that we have. The other problem that we have is because of that debt, we've basically been sold into slavery. Slavery to who? Satan. Satan is leading us. Leading us to do what? To not worship God but to leading us to worship idols. Satan leads us into conflicts with other people. He's a divider of relationships, a divider of families, a divider of people. And through worshiping idols, through our conflicts with others, through our fights that we have, it's basically leading us into destruction. We are slaves to sin. It says in Ephesians 2, 1 and 2, that you are spiritually dead in your sins. And in that state, you follow the way of this world and the way of the ruler of the kingdom of air, which is Satan. Basically, in this state, we are under God's wrath. So, looking at this spiritual state, now we look at the state of Israel regarding these things. The true state of Israel when they were in Egypt, their physical state was a reflection of their spiritual state. Yes, physically, they were slaves under Pharaoh right, in this state of suffering and curses, their spiritual state was the same. Slavery, worshiping idols, that culture that they were in was tied to darkness, death, 
they were truly cursed. And like I said, this isn't just for them. This is all mankind. We are all in this state. We are spiritual debtors and slaves because of what? This root problem of sin. And that's what needs to be addressed. So let's look at point number two, which is the fact that Israel did not redeem themselves. But point number two, they were redeemed by God. And verse 15 reflects upon this. Deuteronomy 15, verse 15 says, Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. Redemption comes from who? It's the work of God. He did it. How was Israel redeemed? How were they able to come out from that state in Egypt? It was through the blood of the Lamb. What did they do? They applied the blood of the Passover lamb. And through that, it was basically their life was purchased from death. Death passed over their house because of that. It was a payment for their sin debt that allowed them to have this freedom. And that led them to truly being free. And of course, we know this is what? This is a foreshadowing of Christ the true Lamb of God, the true Passover Lamb. But in this case, it's no longer a lamb. It is the Son of God that's paying this price. You know, Isaiah 53, 5, he was pierced for our transgressions. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. Right? The Lord laid upon him the inequity of us all. By his wounds we are healed. Salvation, redemption, comes through this payment of the life of the Son of God. Another verse, Colossians 1.13. It says, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Just like the Israelites were in this dominion of darkness in Egypt, we too have been rescued from the dominion of darkness. We've been redeemed, the forgiveness of sins. How? Through the Son, through Christ. It's through the blood of Christ and his death on the cross that allows us to do this. And once again, it's not our work. Redemption is from God. Just like the Israelites, by faith, simply by faith, they applied the blood and they were released. Same with us. With that same faith, of believing through the blood they would be set free. We too, by faith, we enter into Christ and we receive forgiveness of sins and we are released from our slavery to Satan. That is the key. In Ephesians 1.7 it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. This is an act of grace that we've received. It's a gift. Mark 10, 35, the Son of Man did not come to serve, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Once again, pointing to redemption. Redemption is about a ransom, a purchasing, a payment being made for someone. This is the key to understanding today's passage. It's about redemption. That debt has been paid. We have received forgiveness. And that slave state that we were in, we have been liberated from. We are free. That's the significance of this seventh year. It's the year of redemption. But not only are we receiving forgiveness and liberation, but we're also blessed as well. If you read today's passage, Deuteronomy 15, verse 13, it says, And when you release them, do not send them away empty-handed. Supply them liberally from your flock, your threshing floor, and your wine press. Basically saying that not only free them, not only there's their debt you know, covered, not only are they free, but they are blessed as well. Spiritually, we're in this state. Our debt's been paid. We're free, but we're blessed with the spiritual riches of God's grace. 
We are a blessed people, children of God, adopted into his family. Everything has changed for us because we've been redeemed by God. And so finally, knowing that, it's time to head on our walk of faith holding on to this. So the third point is the reason to remember. The reason to remember. There's a reason to remember this. And it's in relation to us as debtors and servants and slaves. In today's passage, Deuteronomy 15, verse 14, it says, Give to them as the Lord your God has blessed you. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you. That is why I give you this command today. What does he say here? He's saying, reflect on this, remember it, remember your slavery. And that is why he's commanding them today to do this as well, canceling debts, releasing their slaves, and to bless them. The point is to reflect upon yourself. The Israelites were supposed to reflect on their state of slavery and how God liberated them. Why? So they could too can have that kind of heart of God in doing the same for others. And so we see here there's this goal regarding this redeeming principle. And we see it in Deuteronomy 15, verse 4. It's kind of interesting. If you read Deuteronomy verse 4, it says, However, there need be no poor people among you. For in the land your God has given you to possess as your inheritance, he will richly bless you. I want you to think about that. What does it mean when he says, no need for any poor people? Of course, if they're doing this, right? There's not going to be any people with, with financial debt. There's going to be no one that are slaves. Basically, he's saying there's no need for that. That is, a, that is an aspect of the fall, right? That's an aspect of a broken world. He says there's no need for poor people. And this is a reflection of there's no need for poor people also spiritually as well. Because in the promised land, in the kingdom of God, that is going to be a land without debt, tied to sin, and our slavery to Satan. We're going to be a blessed people without sin. That is the goal of the kingdom of God. And that's the goal for the promised land for them to enter into. And so sharing that, God gives them the method. And there's basically two things that come out in today's passage to do this. Two things. The first one comes out in verse 5. If only you fully obey the Lord your God and are careful to follow all of his commands I'm giving you today. So the first method to do this is follow and obey the Lord. Follow his word. Follow his word and be obedient to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. This is the way to do that. Follow after the word. Walk with God in your relationship, following the word and receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That's the first thing. The second thing, verse 15, is about remembering. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you. That is why I give you this command today. He's saying, take a time to reflect and remember. Your redemption that came from God. I think this is the way that we are able to forgive others. It's not easy to forgive someone else when they've sinned against us. But if we reflect on our state as sinners, the state that we were in, in darkness, blind, slaves to Satan, enemies of God, and how God forgave us, the price that he paid to do that. It really moves our heart to do the same to others. So that's why it's important. We follow the word, and that word leads us to reflect upon ourselves. That reflection upon ourselves leads us to share the same grace to others. And what is the result? The result is a truly blessed life. The abundant life, the life we're meant to live. We have received grace and we are givers of grace. We're peacemakers. We do this by being filled with the Spirit of God. When we're filled with the Spirit of God, we can remember, yes, we were, we were forgiven. And now it's time to show that forgiveness to others. We show mercy. Why? Because we have been shown mercy. We can give because God has truly blessed us. 
the point of this is all about living out the love of God. As we experience the love of God, we share that same love to others. And so that brings us to the conclusion. It comes kind of full circle in this sense. It's about remembering your experience with God. Once again, you were a sinner, slave, enemy. Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we are sinners, Christ died for us. That's redemption. That's the love of God. That love of God is what overcame our spiritually dark, sinful state and released us from it, brought us into the light. So the point is, once again, as you're experiencing this love of God to show the same love to others. And this is also tied to the fulfillment of the law. What is the law say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and to love others. As we experience that love of God and we love God back, we are able to love others, fulfilling that law. And at the same time, what do we become? Ambassadors of Christ. We're living out Christ in our relationships to others. So I want to close today with an example. And this example comes from a book. It's actually a book that was made into a movie. Um, the book is called Unbroken. Unbroken. Some of you may have read it. But Unbroken is the story of um, an Olympian. His name is Louis Zamperini. And um, he had a troubled childhood, but he overcame it. And eventually he became an Olympian, Olympic runner. But it was kind of during the time when, when World War II was about to break out. And he ended up um, entering into um, the army and serving as, as a bombardier, I believe. Um, and, you know, I don't want to ruin the whole story <laughs> for you and tell you all the details. But anyways, he, he tragically was in an accident, uh, plane crashed. He survived kind of a, a tough period of kind of living out in the ocean for a long period, wandering, um, until he became a prisoner of war in a Japanese um, prison camp. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because, you know, he, he was in this prison camp and he was tortured, he was beaten, and there was one person that was really out to get him, that really made him suffer, really to the end. Someone really, he really hated. Um, and, you know, eventually, of course, um, the war ends, he, he's free. And he ends up returning to America, returning to his life. But he always had this grudge and he had all these problems in his life tied to that, that past that he had, that prison camp, and the suffering. But in the midst of that, as his, as his life is falling apart, his relationship with his wife is falling apart, as he turns to alcohol, in the midst of that, he comes to know the gospel. And he comes and, and he receives salvation. He's redeemed. And his life completely changes. And if you read to the end of the story, it talks about how he becomes, he becomes like an evangelist. He's sharing the gospel to everyone that he meets for his entire life from that moment, moment on. I mean, he's really zealous for the gospel, for Christ, for living it out. And the point is, after he received the gospel, one of the things that he wanted to do was reflecting upon that past when he was in that prison camp and that person that he was holding this grudge against that was really tied to his heart and leading him into alcoholism, all these problems, he decided to forgive him. He decided to forgive this person. And he actually traveled all the way to Japan to try to find this person and say that you are forgiven. So that person too would not be held in bondage to his past as well and all the terrible things that he did. And I think that's, that's the point I'm trying to make is regarding forgiving others. What it does is it releases them and us from that bondage to that sin. Of course, it's not easy, but it releases us from it, from that state of slavery to that, from that trap that we were in and all the problems tied to it. And so what we see is forgiveness, what it really is, is a path to healing. And so today and this week, 
as you kind of reflect on this passage about this year of debts being forgiven, of slaves released, I want you to really reflect upon yourself and your relationships with others. Reflect on your state in relation to God, and then reflect on your relationship to others and address these issues regarding forgiveness that might still be something that you're holding on to, not giving forgiveness, holding on to a grudge, being hard-hearted, tight-fisted. And I think today, start on that path to healing through acknowledging this. I bless you uh, this week to really enter into this blessed forgiving life that Christ offers you. Let's pray at this time. Dear Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, just for the riches that you've blessed us with in Christ. We thank you, Father God, for this new life that you've given us. A life, Father God, not tied to sin, not tied to slavery, but freed from it. And so I pray, Father God, that this week we can truly live it out, especially in our relationship to others. Father God, I know that it's not easy to forgive others. And we have a lot of scars tied to our past, tied to not forgiving others. But I pray, Father God, today will be a day that we can reflect upon things. And today will be a day that we start on that path to forgiveness, to healing, to reconciliation. So that, Father God, we may live a life that truly gives you all the glory and praise. We pray that you truly bless us this week, and we pray all these things in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.